Welcome to the MMA Fan Podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Stu and Blake. Hello and welcome to the MMA Fan Podcast. I am Blake Harrison and joining me as ever is Stu Whiffin. How are you, sir? I'm all right. I'm all right. Should we pretend that we haven't just recorded another episode and we just like we've just seen each other for the first time in a few weeks? How are you oh, doing? Oh yeah, great. No, it's lovely to see you, mate. How have you been? How have you been? Yeah, yeah. So much to talk about. So much to talk about. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, we have just spoken about uh, your awards that you've uh, strategically placed behind your head on the previous episode. <laughs> They're still there on this episode. There they are. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I, I like the fact that every time you laugh. You lean back and laugh on a different direction just to showcase some. (laughs) 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 Yeah, don't worry about it, mate. Oh, podcast Um, listeners, you might want to head over to YouTube just to go marvel. Uh, 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 darling Harrison's uh, Ducky. accomplishment. <laughs> Ducky Harrison. Ducky. Love it. Um, anyway, most people are going to be like, what the fuck are these two idiots talking about? They they've, don't been, they've been thinking that for two years, Blake. Yeah, no, yeah, that, yeah, to be though. fair. To be fair. Right. Well, without further ado, let's get on to UFC 289, Nunes versus Aldana. Um, I think I know what the answer is going to be for this question, Stu, but I'm going to ask it anyway. How excited are you for this card? Uh, um, well, look, this is obviously meant to have been Nunes Pena, uh, yeah. the, 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 the trilogy fight. Uh, I'm not that. I mean, it's it's a great rocky moment for Aldana. It's it's this is you know your chance to to shock the world. Um, I don't think she will, uh, but yeah. So it's 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 a it's a you know watching a man in Nunes fight is always good. Make no mistake. Uh, yeah. Oliveira Dariush, uh, I am excited about. Um, this is a fight that uh, I mean, don't get me wrong. I think Dariush should be fighting for a belt. Uh, but you know he's got a big, big task in front of him here. Uh, the rest of the card, yeah. I mean, it, I I, th- I saw something today. I don't know if it's true, but it did say like for the next however many months, there's a UFC every week. Um, I think for for a while, yeah, there yeah. is. Yeah, and so which is brilliant, which is absolutely brilliant. But what I do think that has potential to do, not on UFC oh. two ninety. He's almost water down the cards with maybe fighters that a lot of people aren't over familiar with, which can be a good thing because these fighters need to grow and become superstars and become, you know, uh, yeah. familiar faces. So it's it's good and bad. But I do think, you know, tail end of last year and beginning of this year, we was getting cards stacked from head to bottom, like with 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 absolute class fighters um taking nothing away from the fighters on this card that we're about to discuss but you know as as a casual when you sort of roll your eyes down that card you're not going oh oh it's like uh, okay it's it's not a, it's not a stacked card with familiar faces and people that you know maybe you, you, you you're less than diehards you know, are going, mm, yes, it's pretty all right. What, what do you mean? Are you excited about it? Um, I think because I know what's coming, not so much. Like mm-hmm. what we've got at UFC 290 and UFC 291 mm. are absolute bangers. Like mm-hmm. I, I haven't got those cards in front of me at the moment. But, I mean, you're looking at... Um, <laughs> What is it? There's the BMF title fight. There's uh, Moreno versus Pantoja on one of them. There's um, uh, obviously Yair versus Volk. Yeah. Uh, like there's some absolute crackers on, yeah, on, all on the some fights. of the cards. All the fights are on them two cards. And, and and even again lower down the card, not just the mains and co-mains, but there's some some great fighters on those cards as well. Names that we we recognize and, and love fighters that you go, could these guys really bring it every single time? But I do think that there's some more, you know, what's the phrase? Um, 
diamonds in the rough or uh, you know rough gems in uh, in in some of these uh, UFC two eighty nine. Uh, which fights. is in Vancouver. We should say that it's in Canada. Uh, yeah, for the first and, and... time in years, I don't think they've been to Canada for a for a long time. So hopefully the the crowd are going to be up for it, and the atmosphere will be really really good. Well, they should be because there's there's a um a fair bit of Canadian talent on there as well. So uh, I'm I'm sure that will keep the uh the the, the fans super uh, engaged. Um, well look, let's let's start. Uh, Go on. You're gonna say you're gonna start with the the main event. Yeah, I think, I think so. that's what's. That's what's not really helping this situation is the card itself is a little bit iffy and the main event is, as you pointed out a second ago, it should have been a Pena versus Nunes trilogy, which would have had something to it. Trilogies are always a little bit interesting and exciting, especially when they're 1-1 and stuff. Now we've got Aldana. And I think for a casual fan, you can look at Aldana and go, she's only on a two-fight win streak. Like... Is she really, really worthy of, of fighting Nunes and all that stuff? But actually, I think that this this could be surprising. I think Aldana, when you look at some of her fights, she's got crisp hands. She's got good boxing. She has knocked people out before. So she's got knockout power at bantamweight. She's not one of these, you know, smaller bantamweights or people that would struggle. at. Uh, she's fought at catch weights as well, up at 140. So she's not small. And that's one of the things with Nunes. She seems to dwarf people sometimes. Um, and so, you know, she's got size. She's got some power. She's got crisp hands. Her grappling, I don't think, is amazing. But she's very active off her back. She is someone that is hunting for submissions, even if it's in a kind of way of just trying to unsettle you and get you off of her so that she can then stand up and get back to what she does really well, which is the boxing. Um, so I think, you know, that there's possibilities, especially with how fights have gone recently. Like, there's something about these dominant champions of late, particularly in the female divisions, where they've been shown to be human a little bit recently. And we're, at, you know, we had Nunes Pena one. I know she she clawed that back and she, she got that back Um and maybe she's put some of those demons to bed. But you now can't look at a Nunes fight in quite the same way. She's not as um, invincible as she's seen before. And the same with, with Shevchenko. When Grosso beat her, everyone was like, whoa, this is, this is really surprising. And so I think if Aldana were to pull something off in this fight, I w wouldn't be as shocked as I could have been previously, because I feel like we've seen it a few times recently where these dominant champions have been shown up again, particularly Nunes and Shevchenko. So I don't know. I don't know. What do we um, equate this to? Do we equate this to complacency where the champs have, have cleared out divisions and that, you know, mm -hmm. and, and whoever's put in front of them now, they're like, oh, well, you know, Aldana shouldn't really even be here. This should be Pena. Like, do you think, you know that. Do you think she underestimated Pena in the first fight? You know, and do you think the same with 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 um, Shevchenko? You know, do they just have such longevity as as champs and 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 you know, like you say, clear out these divisions where it's like, ah, you know, oh, oh, this this ain't a danger. Do, you know, do you think that's the fairy tale, or do you think that that does actually exist? I think it could be a combination of two things. I think it could be that it could be that. You know, these dominant champions just get a bit complacent. And I can totally understand that. I'm sure they're still training very hard, but there's got to be a mental shift when you've earned all that money. You know, we had Paul Craig on the show recently. And obviously, it's a very different thing talking about someone like Conor McGregor than it would be Amanda Nunes, uh, Valentina Shevchenko, and people like that. But effectively, what he was saying is, you know, we fight for glory. Conor's already got glory. We fight for, uh, for money. Connor's already got more money than he can count. Now, I know that Nunes and Shevchenko aren't comparable to Connor, but there's definitely a world in which you could say they've cemented their legacies. They've, they've already got glory. They are already... Valentina Shevchenko is definitely the greatest flyweight of all time. Amanda Nunes is still the greatest female fighter of all time. Um, so they've both cemented legacies. Uh, if Valentina were to go up and try and fight at bantamweight, would she be a little bit, just that tiny bit more switched on, have that fire in her belly a little bit more? Equally, 
when you're uh, Amanda Nunes, she's probably got more money than she ever really needs. Uh, and she doesn't seem like a lavish lifestyle type person. She's got, I think, another child on the way. I think um, Nina Nunes is, is having another baby. So uh, so she'll be a mum of two very soon, uh, I believe. So there's there's that reason to, to want to keep fighting and, and earn money. But with, with Shevchenko, I mean, I don't know if she lives in Kyrgyzstan most of the time or if she lives elsewhere, but yeah, I can't imagine her being someone that needs loads and loads of money to live a lifestyle that she's incredibly happy with. So does that hunger fade away? And that is the complacency. But equally, when you've been champion for a very long period of time, all these challengers and all these young, hungry contenders are looking at fighting you for years. They are are coming up. You look, Erin Blanchfield is 23 years old. She's probably fighting for a belt, if not next, then maybe after one more win. She's probably been training for Shevchenko for years. They've been studying Shevchenko for years. And it's the same with people with, with Nunes. They've been studying them for years. Now, a lot of the time, people study and study and study and they still can't beat them because they're that damn good. But when people that are good have been studying you for a long time and looking at all the things you do right and all the things you do wrong, that's got to bridge the gap slightly. And so when you're slightly complacent and they've been studying you for so long, then, you know, something's got to give at some point. So I think it could be a combination of, of a few things there. And I do think an Amanda Nunes that is on form, is hungry, and is no way thinking about retirement at all, should dispatch of Irina Aldana pretty simply. But I don't know what Nunes is going into the cage. She, she, she had a real axe to grind with Pena, particularly after that first fight, because Pena talked a lot of trash as well. Pena was right up in her grill. She was talking some trash. So she wanted to really set that right. That loss probably was like one of the worst losses she could have because it was to someone that was chatting shit about her for so long. Um, so I think... With this fight, is that fire and hunger going to be there as much? Is she just happy to just defend the belt and keep cementing the fact that she's the greatest female fighter of all time? I don't know. And that that's the question. Do, do we have the answer to that? Because Aldana, albeit I don't think as skillful as Nunes, she's got tools to make Nunes' life difficult. Yeah, she, she isn't has. going to be dwarfed by her. Because she won. You don't think she's going to be dwarfed by her. I... I, I... I, I think, you know, there's a lot to be said for, for you know, for, for watching tape and studying these fighters. And when Amanda Nunes starts teeing off like she does, I, I do think there's, you know, a, a big question as to whether people can weather that storm. Because fuck yeah. me, like, you know, she throws heavy hits and yeah. and punches in bunches as well. And, uh, you know, you, you've seen what she's done to so many fighters. And... You know, again, a lot of them highlight reel hiding she dished out was quite a few years ago now, and so mm -hmm. much has changed in her life. And uh, uh, and and yeah, I don't know. I, I I still think, like you say, Amanda Nunes on point. Oh, Dana ain't getting anywhere near her. But you don't know what Amanda Nunes is going to walk in that octagon uh, and. Is Aldana going to go right? This is my chance. This is my one shot. And like, and when you've got that mindset, you know this could be the moment. You know, we've seen some fucking amazing upsets. Like, and yeah. and, and this could be another one of them. But um, and so I don't want to, I don't want to hate on this fight too much because it's not Pena. I, I do think, you know, seeing somebody get their shot sometimes can give you some real amazing results and a real shocker that, that, that could end up going fucking hell i can't believe yeah. she just done that so i'm hoping not i want to see nunez win but i hope that you know we do see a a a, a fighter see, seizing that opportunity to put in a performance of a lifetime and I, I think hopefully that could give us a good fight make nunez really up her game as well and, and see the best from the champ as well i think that's that's the best case scenario yeah i mean I think I, I would favour Nunes in this fight because I think she's the most powerful striker that Aldana's ever faced. Mm. And I think she's also a more powerful and dominant grappler than Aldana's ever faced. And I think that um, 
I think that Amanda Nunes's tactics in this could really dictate how difficult her night is. And I think if Nunes implements a grappling heavy, you know, strategy, I think that uh, that she could do really well here. But I think if she just stands and trades, I think that that just opens the door for Aldana. It's not that Nunes can't knock Aldana out. She absolutely can. But I just think it opens the door for Aldana to catch her as well. And I think the smart play would be go to your grappling, be dominant on the ground, hit the ground and pound and see what opens up for you. Um, but again, if she just stands and trades with her, Nunes might be able to knock her out. But equally, Aldana has got that crisp Mexican boxing style and uh, she might catch her as well. So it'd be interesting. I'd certainly think for the fans, it'd be nice if Nunes just stands and trades. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Her boxing is good. Uh, I mean, she did lose to Holly, didn't she? I think Holly outboxed her uh, over a yeah. decision. Yeah, I watched Dan Hardy talk about that fight, actually. And he was talking about the fact that it just seemed like maybe Aldana sort of showed her too much respect. Mm. And I think that that see, Aldana isn't young, but she's sort of, I think, youngish in fight years, if I'm not mistaken. So these things can be, uh, can be a problem. Well, actually, no, I'm lying. She's 14 and six, so that she has had the fights. So, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. But Holly Holmes so tricky. Some people just find her really tricky to deal with uh, because she's still very, very, very good. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. I I don't think Aldana has shown me anything that makes me go, oh, she's got a real chance against a Nunes that, as I said, her head's right and she's on form. But because of what happened with Pena in the first fight, because of what's happened recently with like Grasso and Shevchenko, where you're like, this person's got no chance against this unbelievable fighter that we've been watching dominate people for so long. You just don't know, man. So, uh, yeah, we'll have to wait and see. Shall we move on to the co-main? Yeah, boy. Charles Oliveira versus Benil Dariush. I mean, yeah, this, this has the makings of a cracker. Um, yes. And... I do feel sorry for Benil. I do I do think this is a ridiculously tough fight uh to have when you should be fighting for the strap. And uh mm-hmm. and but Charles Oliveira ranked above him, so I get it. Um but you know, it's just we 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 spoke about the luck that Darius has had over the years and it just appears to be the guy that's just nah I'll fight anyone. Like and uh, mm-hmm. and yeah, be careful what you wish for because you've now got to fight Charles Oliveira. Um, before we even break it down, who do you think is going to win this? It's it's a really tough one to call. I think I don't know if I'm going heart over head here because it is really really tough. But I think I'm gonna go with Benny Darius. Mm-hmm. How's that going to happen? How? Mm. Uh, I think it all plays out on the feet. I think Dariush hits harder than Charles Oliveira. Uh, and I think that as much as Oliveira's got a great chin, Dariush also has a great chin. I think the key for me is that I don't think Dariush is going to be scared at all of Oliveira's ground game. I think Dariush has phenomenal wrestling and jiu-jitsu. And I think this will play out on the feet until one of them gets badly clipped and then it ends up on the floor. And I I can see either of them clipping the other one. I mean, Oliveira has got great striking now as well. He's got that Muay Thai style. I don't think anyone's going to be shooting for takedowns. Maybe I'm wrong, but I think it'd be a dangerous game to play. I think it's going to be a club and sub for, for one of them. I don't you, know which you, one. You, but you think one. that mutual respect to each other's grand game is going to keep it on its feet? I think that Dariush's respect for Oliveira's ground game is going to keep it on his feet. And I think Dariush's takedown defense will stop anything Oliveira tries to get it to the, gr- the ground. Mm-hmm. Oliveira won't be able to take Dariush down. I think Oliveira's wrestling is not Mateo Scamra. He's a, his jiu-jitsu is unbelievable, but his wrestling is good. But it's not Mateo Scamra or Islam Makachev or Armand Sarukian. And I think Dariush is a phenomenal scrambler, great takedown defence. And so I just see this being a crazy stand-up fight. And 
uh, as much as technically maybe Oliveira's got those straighter, crisper punches, I just can see Darius like Oliveira gets clipped in so many of his fights. And I just think in fights where Oliveira has been clipped before, a lot of people have been afraid to go to the ground with him because of his reputation. Islam Makachev wasn't afraid to go to the ground with him. After he clipped him, he followed him down when Oliveira wasn't fully there, subbed him. And I can see Darius doing a similar thing. I don't think he's going to be scared of going to the ground with, with Chucky Olives. He's going to clip him on the chin. When he's down, he's going to sub him. If it happened in, in the other way around, if, if Oliveira clips Darius, follows him down and subs him, I can totally see that happening. He'd done that to Michael Chandler. Well, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, no, he didn't. He just finished Michael Chandler with strikes, didn't he? Um, it hooked him and then literally ground and pounded him. Yeah. So, look, it, look this is... This, if I was American and I was being forced to think about paying 70 or 80 dollars for this card, this is the only fight that would really tempt me to do it. Nunez Aldana is interesting, but do I want to pay 70 dollars for that fight? No. Mm. This fight is where I'm starting to go, oh, is this worth it? Mm. Granted, you've got two epic cards in July that I'd be saving my money for. Thankfully, we're British and we don't have to worry about that. We just pay for our BT Sport and crack on. But um, I, I, this is the only fight that would really make me go, I need to either watch this live or pay loads of money for the pay-per-view. Um, and it's because you just don't know. It's, they're so evenly matched. You just don't know. This could be a club and sub in round one. This could be a five-round war. You just don't know. But I think Dariush has better cardio. So if it goes longer, I think it favours Dariush. But I don't know, man. It's, it's it's a tricky one to call. So how do you see the fight playing out? I, I, I kind of think the opposite to you. Uh, I, right. I, I do think it will be a lot of stand-up. Uh, but I think I really rate uh, Oliveira's Muay Thai. Uh, and, mm -hmm. I, and I like his striking. And I think... If he does, if he does clip him, or or something takes this fight to the ground, I can quite easily see Charles getting a rear naked uh, and 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 just finishing it. He's he's you know his jiu-jitsu is phenomenal, and uh, you know and I'm you know you look at his record, right? Obviously he's got a loss to Makachev, right? And he's got wins though, a, a first round like finish of, of Justin Gaethje, you know, chokes out Dustin Poirier, knocks down and, and grand and pans Michael Chandler, beats Tony Ferguson, beats Kevin Lee, you know, and then you just keep going through his record. And like, you know, he, he hadn't lost since 2017 to Paul Felder. And, you know, he, he had a very kind of interesting career up until that fight. And then, I don't know what significant changes he made after that Felder fight, but he went on a 15-fight win streak. I mean, that's remarkable, and that's fighting the best, right? So I think experience is going to be important in this, and I think I, – I, I just think he's he, – he, <laughs> I think he finishes it on the ground. Uh, I, I, I don't see him knocking at uh, uh, Benny, but I do think something's going to put that 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 fight on the floor. And uh, and and as much as his takedown defense is good, I do really rate Charles, and and I think he'll get him there, and and I think he'll finish him uh, probably with a with a, with a rear naked. I'm just looking at something. I think it was only an 11 fight win streak. I think there's a few grappling fights in there. You're right. So You're right. I think it was only an 11 fight win streak. Benil Dariush is currently on an eight fight win streak. Mm -hmm. He doesn't have the name value that Oliveira has. 100%. And, and I mean, with that, come, what he did with that comes experience. You know, 100%. He's got a win over Tony as well, and obviously Gamron. Yeah, but da Dariush has got a win over Tony. He's got a win over. Yeah, the, Oliveira's not got a win over Gamera, is he? No, Just no, I was, talking, I was talking about oh, Benny, sorry, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, Benny, yeah. Um, yeah, he's got a win over Drew Dober as well. I know he's not a top-level guy. Also hasn't lost a fight since 2018. Um, 
yeah, look, the, if you're comparing resumes, then Oliveira obviously is head and shoulders above Dariush. But yeah. skill for skill, I do think Dariush is very, very good. Does a lot well that Oliveira does well. I think I think also he's got the power advantage. But you're right. I mean, it, Oliveira's Muay Thai and striking is probably better than Dariush's. Um, I don't know, man. I, I don't know. I think there's also a part of me that really wants Darius to get that shot because I think he's earned it. Completely. So I think completely. there's part of me that is really rooting for him to win. As much uh, as I love Oliveira as well. There, I mean, there's there's no bad guys was. in this fight. There's no bad guys. No, absolutely not. Phenomenal, phenomenal uh, fight. In terms of what what happens to Darius if he wins, do you think that's finally a guaranteed title shot? Who else has he got to beat? But it's not about him, though, is it? It's about, for me, I I think if Darius wins, and I've been saying this for ages, he absolutely should be getting the title shot. Problem is, what happens with Poirier and Gaethje for the BMF belt? Mm. What if one of them gets a first-round knockout, which I don't see happening, but what if one of them gets a first-round knockout they're holding up that BMF belt. They've got way more name value than Benil Dariush. And they say, I'm ready to go in October. I don't need the break. I'm ready to go. Put me in there against Makachev. Mm -hmm. Does Dariush get the shot? The UFC are looking at all the dollar signs with uh, someone like Poirier or Gaethje. Not to mention, what if Volkanovski has a fantastic win? Over uh, uh over Yair Rodriguez. Right. So I, I don't think he should leap Darius. I think Darius should get the next shot if he wins. But Volkanovsky's a bigger name than 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 Darius. And he's got history with Makachev where people go, I want to see that fight again. So let, let let's say for instance, right, um Dustin starts his gauge, right? And yeah. uh and, and Dustin calls for that fight. And Volk does a number against Yair, and uh, and they call for for the Makachev fight. Both of them. Where do you think the biggest money is? Do you think Volk, or do you think Dustin? I think Dustin. Yeah, I I do, and and I, and I think, I mean, don't get me wrong. I I, I called this in December, and like oh, and. Uh, <laughs> What an idiot. Uh, I keep having to say this, but if you haven't heard it yet, in like December or January, we did a champion's mm. predictions and I was ripping Stu for picking Dustin Poirier, who to be the lightweight champion of the world at the end of this year. Now you're discussing the possibilities of it. I'm definitely not discussing the possibilities of it. I'm discussing the possibility of him maybe fighting for a belt. Sure. Yeah. But is he going to beat Islam Makachev? No. Knocks no, him out. Not. Knocks him out, mate. No way. If that happens, you will not shut up about it as well. I was so ever. rooting for Makachev so <laughs> much, just I wouldn't be able to listen to you jabbering on about it all day. Um, so, yeah, I don't know, man. I just think there's there's a world in which, um, and particularly for Oliveira as well, I don't know what Oliveira is really fighting for here because I think he is behind the BMF belt winner, mm. whoever that may be. I think if Volk wins, he's behind Volk because his fight was just not competitive with Makachev at all. So I, I don't really know if Oliveira, I think he's going to have to get a couple of wins under his belt, yeah. if, particularly while Makachev is still the champ. So that's a tricky one. But, but where, um, where does this leave Darius? Are we saying in a world where Dustin or Justin uh, gets the win, Volk gets a, a, a win and they both call for Makachev. Do you think they both step over Benil? Because I, I unfortunately it's fucked and it's unfair. I mean, maybe not unfair for Volk, because you know, he, he put in such a performance against him. Uh and and you know, he, he talks about that performance when he when he came on the podcast a few weeks back. I'd, I'd urge you to go and listen to that. It's a cracking chat. Um but I, I I don't think as much as me and you have been long time Benil Dariush fans and have called for you know him to get the respect and the and 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 the shot for a long time now. Um 
also, as much and, and taking this into account, say they do overstep him, right? That's unfortunate. But I know when we were saying, has Makachev really been tested? Who's the guy to really test him? Yes, we saw Volk really test him, uh, which I think does put Volk in a good position to get that rematch. And it's always interesting when you know the, 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 you know there's, there's champ versus champ. Um, Darius, I think with that wrestling, is the fighter to really, really test Makachev. You know, we saw we saw in the, the Volk fight, Makachev's hands are, 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 are vastly improving as well. We know that Darius has got heavy hands. Um, I do think that that, as much as it's not the most marketable fight, I think it could be... I think he could have a really good chance of beating Makachev. Um, yeah, no, I think I, I really want to see the Dariush fight. This isn't Dari- quite Tony versus Khabib, but it's close in Dariush versus uh, Makachev. And I I really, really want to see it. Um, but yeah, my, my worry is it's all about timing. It's all about timing. If Dariush wins and Volkanovsky wins, and with Poirier Gaethje, it has to be an early finish. Because if those two go five rounds, because Makachev wants to fight in October. As far as I know, Makachev wants to headline October in Abu Dhabi. That's what he's going to do. Also, if Justin so, and Dustin goes five rounds, oh, fuck me. That's a fucking fight. Isn't it? Oh, I mean, it'd be amazing. <laughs> but if, if that fight goes anything more than three rounds, hmm. those two, whoever wins it, are going to need some time off. There's yeah. no way they are ready to fight next. So if that fight goes four or five rounds... I don't think either one of them will be able to step in three, four months down the line to fight Makachev. No way. So that's good news for Dariush. If Volkanovski wins uh, against Yair and Dariush wins, maybe it's about who has the better performance. I don't know. I really don't know. Because I do think that Volkanovski generates more money than Dariush does. But it's just so unfair. It really is so unfair. I think even Volk has said that on other interviews. I think he has said Darius should be next type thing. Oh. So I don't know. We'll have to, I think even Poirier did. Even Poirier said Poirier said something like, I think uh, Darius should be next, but this is a business. This isn't a fair, fair fight business. And, uh, you know, that is uh, that is how things go. The UFC are a mm. business. They are not some meritocratic sporting organization. They are a business and they're all about earning the most money possible. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's a tricky one. I, I really hope Benny Darius wins and I really hope he gets his title shot because he's really earned it. Yeah. But you just don't know what's going to happen. Well, look, let's, we, we, we've been going for a while now. And uh, is there anything else on this, this card that you, you know, you're excited to talk about? Um, Sorry, I'll rephrase that. Is there anything on this card you want to talk about? <laughs> I was about to say, excited is a strong word, isn't it? <laughs> um, look, there are some good fights. There are some good fights. I think Landwehr versus Ige could be a bit of a banger. I think that could be fun. Landwehr's on a free fight win streak. It's been looking good. Uh, Ige's had a mix of results of late. Well, he, you know, he had uh, a bad he, run, didn't he? Uh, well, he, he he's, he's won two of his last six, but his losses are to yeah, Calvin Cater. Mobsar Evluev, Korean Zombie, and Josh Emmett. I mean, that that is tough competition. Yeah. That is really tough competition. And I think Ige's probably, for as long as he stays uh, good uh, and doesn't age too much, I think he will be around that top 15 level, somewhere between kind of, you know, 10 to 15. I, I think that's where Ige's at. I don't think he's really going to ever solidify himself for a long period inside the top 10 or make it to the top five or anything. I think that's where he is. So I think this is a good chest, uh, test for Landwehr, sorry, just to kind of see where is he. And if he loses to Ige, I think he's someone that's on the periphery of the top 15 to 25 range. But if he wins, then maybe he's someone that could make a little run into the top 10 and, and, and see where he goes. Because I think Ige is a really good litmus test for uh, for some of these fighters coming through. And I do think it could be a very fun fight. Have you got anything to add about Mike Malott versus Adam Fujit? Because fuck it, fuck, fuck it, it, mate, fuck Fugit. it, mate, fuck it off. Like because 
I'm just looking at, at Malar. I mean, he's on a, obviously in UFC, one, two, three. Yeah, a contender series. He's got a win over Mickey Gall. But main card, it's like, there's not it's many. He's Canadian, isn't it? He's the hometown boy. But what obviously, the crowd's But like, oh my God, like, I think apart from the main card, the only other, oh, there's Chris Curtis, he's ranked, was the Ige and, and Emma Vobs uh, uh, ranked. Apart from that, that's that's a fight I'm interested in because like I, I, Imavov I versus of, Chris Curtis. Yeah, I think that's an interesting fight because Imavov's coming off his loss to Sean Strickland, and that's a fight that I really expected him to win. I mean, Imavov was one of these guys in this new crop of middleweights coming through, along with Andre Muniz and Drikas Duplessis, who uh, I thought you know they're coming through to take over from the old guard, and they're going to be the next gr- crop of challengers for Israel Adesanya. And then he fell short against Sean Strickland in a fight that I thought was kind of tailor, tailor-made for him to win. So he's only 27. I think he, he was really improving until that fight. Yeah, he wins How over he approaches... uh, Joaquin Buckley and uh, Shabazian. Yeah, yeah de- decent wins. But again, how he fares now going forward, has he learned? Has he adjusted anything? Again, only 27. So he's got a long way to go. And has certainly shown some skills in the octagon where you go, this guy could be a contender down the line. Um, how he goes against Chris Curtis, who's a solid pro. Like Chris Curtis has done really well since coming into the UFC. His only two losses have been against Hermanson and Gastelum. Um, and he was doing well in that Gastelum fight as well until I think they had a clash of heads. And that kind of led to, uh, to him not doing so well after, after that. And uh, I think he tried to get the fight overturned the the result of the fight overturned because of that clash of heads instead uh, as with a lot of these things they they didn't overturn it was but, a um, some yeah. fight in london yes it was and he got a bit struck he about was it not happy yeah. he walked past us didn't he and he was raging he, he wasn't too happy yeah but i think i think we know who chris curtis is and i don't think he'll ever be a contender for a belt or anything like that but he's a solid test for people. And I think that Imavov is someone that if he learns and continues to improve and he can dispatch of people like Chris Curtis, he maybe could go on a run and mm. actually get to a title fight. Yeah. So this will be interesting to see where he's at from this. And then other than that, you've got Miranda Maverick versus uh, Jasmine Jazdavicious. Um Decent flyweight fight. Miranda Maverick is someone that, you know, she's fought her way back into the ranking. She's young as well. She's only 25. And uh, she's fought her way back into the ranking. She was in the rankings for a bit, had a couple of losses, I think, to, to Macy Barber and then to Erin Blanchfield as well. I mean, no shame in losing to Erin Blanchfield at all. Um, she's young. She is, I think, doing like a master's or a PhD in something as well. So she's clearly very intelligent and has... has opportunities outside of the cage to, to do well in life, but she's choosing to do this. She has to. With a name like Miranda Maverick, you have to be a fighter. You, you can't <laughs> be a, anything else. Or a pilot. You've got to be yeah. a, like a jet pilot. Definitely. Pilot. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, either a fighter or a fighter pilot. Fighter yeah. has to be in there somewhere. Yeah, um, absolutely. So, yeah, Miranda Maverick, uh, she could still become someone of real, you know, importance to the flyweight division, I think. She has got good skills. So we'll see where that goes. But again, maybe she's been studying too much for a Miranda. Degree. Miranda Fear, the Maverick. Why is it yeah. not Miranda Top Guns Maverick? Like, surely, why would you Top go Gun- with Miranda Top Guns Maverick? Yeah, that sounds shit. Top Gun? No, <laughs> no. At least I'm done with that. Like, Fear the Maverick. Come on, Miranda. How about Miranda Tom Cruise once played? Maverick. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. yeah. There you go. Well, we solved that issue for you, Miranda. Yes, I can invite. Yeah. Um, but that's kind of it. That's I mean, again, this is not a stacked card. When no. we get to UFC 291 and yeah. UFC 290, those are cards that you know we're going to be incredibly excited about. And the fact we're that... going to be delving into so many. But it's probably going to be well over an hour. Those exactly. Previews. It's the fact this, that we've only really discussed so two farts, uh, two farts, two, two, farts. Two, <laughs> <laughs> two fights at length, uh, and I'm already thinking, 
Miranda, you could be my wingman bullshit. I could be yours, Maverick. Like, I should not <laughs> be thinking of new names for Miranda Maverick. I should be talking about the rest of the fights on the card. And, uh, yeah, they don't seem to be there. But, yeah, let's uh, let's hope that Benil and Charles put on some spectacular fight for us to uh, to make it all worthwhile. You said Charles again. <laughs> you always say Charles. That's, a, that's such a cockney thing to call Charles Charles. Oh, like Charlie Charles. Boy. Oh, Charlie Boy. No, but it's right. never Charlie Boy. Charles. It's like, like it's Adrian Charles is the name of a broadcaster. Charles. But you're saying like, Charles, you're Charles. Yeah. It's A-R, Charles. It's posh though, Charles. isn't it? It's not, it's not I-L. No, it's not posh. It's normal. Charles. Charles. No, but I'm not telling you to go, Charles, darling. <laughs> Charles. <laughs> Charles. You can still say it London. Charles. Not Charles. 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 <laughs> Fucking hell. King's furious with you. Um, all right. Shall we call it a date? Yeah, yeah, I think we're done. Um, thanks ever so much for listening. Go check out the back catalogue, uh, whether you uh, check that out on an audio platform of your choice or why not go over and subscribe and watch our content over on YouTube. There's stacks there and, uh, yeah, go and get stuck in and, uh, and, and go rinse that back catalogue because uh, – there's a who's who of MMA legends to be enjoyed over there. I'll see you next time. Yeah, yeah we will. But just before we go, uh, we've also just released an episode that was covering uh, the recent furore over the judging of uh, Kaikara France versus Al Bazi, which happened on Saturday. So if you saw that fight, you've got a problem with the judges. Check out our episode on that and see what you think about how we scored the fight and what we think of the judging quote unquote problem in in MMA and what we think about it. So check that episode out. And also if you haven't watched them yet, we did have, as Stu said, Alexander the Great Volkanovsky, featherweight champion of the world, uh, once pound for pound fighter, best fighter on the planet, uh, still the number two right now behind John Jones. He was on the show only a couple of weeks ago. Uh, and we just had Paul Craig on as well. And Paul Craig is moving down to middleweight in his fight in London and he talked us through some of the science of his weight cut some of it went over my head a lot does but uh yeah he uh he was he was very very interesting was the way he was talking about his weight cut and how that's happening and his fight with Andre Muniz and then obviously we've already mentioned back catalogues of, of fights through every episode we do we, we talk about that so go and check out the back catalog if there's any fighters that you like scroll through and see if their name pops up on our back catalog and hopefully they will and you can listen to their episodes and where we talk about their history and their career so far how they got into MMA and all that kind of stuff so yeah Charles anything else? <laughs> Thank you.